You're driving down the highway and someone cuts you off. Is your first instinct to be absolutely furious or to consider all of the possibilities for why someone could have done such a thing? What gets us from here to there? It's perception checking, challenging our once myopic way of thinking and exploring multiple ways to interpret our experiences. Perception checking takes us to a place of empathy, one of the core concepts at the heart of relational satisfaction, workplace success, and media literacy. Let's get back to the basics of communication and human connection. The human brain can process information in milliseconds. Within moments of me walking onto the stage, you started to process things about me and file me into boxes in your head. At a young age, I became aware of how others may see us. It all started with a conversation that I'm sure most fathers had with their daughters in the 90s, the idea that piercings, let alone a tattoo, would make us not hireable. And I really wanted to get my ears pierced. Being a 13-year-old girl, I had thoughts, opinions, feedback. But mine might have been a little bit different than most because the first thing I thought of was my hair. I had a genetic lottery of sorts. My eyelashes are different colors, and I have this orange streak that goes through my hair. So I said to my dad, people are going to think orange hair one day, purple the next, and you know they're going to think what they're going to think. And my dad said, no, but Kim, that's natural. You were born that way. And I said, I don't think it matters. I became annoyingly aware that people might put me into a box that I didn't ask to be in. As I got older, as a communication professor, I made it my goal to challenge my students to think about how, they per how their perceptions work and to back it all up with empathy. Because the truth is that we put people and things into boxes very quickly. Perception is a process that we can break down into three stages, organization, interpretation, and selection. We want to be mindful of both how we place people into boxes and also how the process works. We're all asked to select information and process it immediately. We might react to the stimuli that's most loud in an environment, but more often than not, it's our own motives that attract us to information to select and process. Essentially, our interest that data that aligns with our interests or values. Our personal bias kicks in, and in some cases, we might not even realize we're doing this. If you're engaging with something with purpose or intent, your interest can fade then, too. If you're listening to your favorite podcast and the host takes a detour to talk about a movie you haven't seen, your attention might shift to something else making noise in your headspace. Perhaps you have a big presentation at work this week. The stress and anxiety leading up to that event might take over as opposed to that movie you haven't seen or have no interest in. Your psychological noise was the stimuli that won. Once we've selected information, we have to process it somehow, some way. We all have a personal filing system in our head. Once we encounter new data, we have to arrange it in a meaningful way, give it purpose. We use schemas or ways to label events as good or bad, fun or dangerous. If you break your leg while skiing, you might file that under not such a good experience. But not all ways of organizing information are perfect or ideal. Stereotypes often become a way to sort information when we have little time to process. These fixed and overgeneralized labels become a way to uh, sort information when we have little time to process. The, our first they become a part of our first impressions, which can have consequences. We have to sort through our boxes and try to make sense of it all. In a perfect world, we all take that time. Unfortunately, many will stop at how they process information in a way that's problematic or simply inaccurate. It's in the last step of the perception process that allows us to interpret this data and then separates us as competent communicators. Here in this final stage, we attach meaning and we try to decipher how we arrived at that conclusion challenging ourselves to think of all context and influence, to check our personal bias, or to ask questions like, am I tired? Am I hungry? When we take a beat, we allow ourselves to level up our communication skills. Here's a great moment for empathy. 
Have you ever been placed in a box that you didn't belong in? Think about it and sit with that for a moment. Remember those feelings. This is what you can use to motivate you in the future, to challenge yourself to look deeper. And once we place something into a personal file in our headspace, we can always rearrange it. Those moves are not permanent. There's always room for a post-it note to edit your thoughts. We should challenge ourselves to think of a situation in at least two different ways. Ask ourselves, what have I witnessed or experienced? Get feedback, go directly to the source. If not, perception check with a friend or loved one. We often do our best negotiation through exchanging stories with others. The brilliant thing about humans is that we all have our own field of experience, meaning in this moment, what you know, what you've done, what you're yet to do. When we collaborate with others, we are creating empathy. We especially want to carve out time to perception check in our personal relationships. If you meet up with a friend for lunch and they seem sad or stressed, you might consider the context of a previous conversation. Did they have something important planned this week? Are they in good health? Have you personally said or done something that could have caused them pain? This is a time to touch down with that friend, ask them how they're doing, and offer support. Perception checking also allows you to be the star of the workplace. Your boss seems angry. Have you met all your personal deadlines? Or do they have to take on an unpleasant task like letting a coworker go? Perception checking and empathy work in tandem with one another. The ability to feel with someone or meet them where they're at make us not only better communicators, but better humans. At the end of the day, human connection is what allows us to thrive both personally and professionally. And it's not just something we can use in our relationships. We can use perception checking with our interaction with media and how they communicate with us. This skill set can help us encode and decode those messages. Any text, a film, a podcast, a news article, anything we consume creates space for us to evaluate what we thought. How would others interpret this? Is there any other way to see it? When we become active participants in our interaction with media, we increase our media literacy. There isn't just one area of our life that needs this important skill set. It's each and every part of our daily life and routine. When you perception check, you're not changing who you are, but rather how you think. And you can always have that post-it note ready to revise your thoughts. So, the next time a car cuts you off, you can think, bad driver, or medical emergency, late for an interview. It's truly a challenge worth accepting. Thank you.